little more than just one year ago. Longtime listeners of this podcast will know that an episode hit their feed titled The Milwaukee Bucks Game One Loss Made Me Optimistic. Turned out that episode did not age great. Uh, it looked like for a second that it aged really great as the Milwaukee Bucks demolished the Miami Heat in game two of their first round matchup in the 2023 NBA playoffs. Games three, four, and five, well, those don't didn't go Milwaukee's way. So why am I making this episode now? It feels full circle to make this episode of why the Milwaukee Bucks game one win made me feel pessimistic about Milwaukee's chances of winning an NBA title. Let's dig into it here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Brewers, Badgers, Packers, Bucks, and beyond six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. I want to come out of the gate and say, no, I'm not necessarily pessimistic about Milwaukee's chances of winning the round one matchup with the Indiana Pacers. However, I would be dependent on some really big factor. And I'm sure there are plenty of you who are going to be not surprised by what my big factor there is, but I, I I found the idea for this episode to come in intuitively to me because I remember being at game two of the round one series against the Heat last year and thinking, okay, this is it. Fluky game one, Milwaukee or Miami rather shot the lights out of the gym. They're not going to do that again. And then Milwaukee shot the lights out of the gym in game two. And I thought, okay, we've reached, reached an equilibrium. Both teams had a really hot shooting night. Uh, but then the games three, four, and five, things didn't go Milwaukee's way. I, I posted on the website, formerly known as Twitter. You posted, gross. Um, during, I mean, what, the first half of, of the Indiana-Milwaukee game that Bucks fans should not get too high, should not get too low because they should remember game two of that series from last year. And, and for those of you who don't know, those of you who do not follow the Milwaukee Bucks very extensively, they're playing a first round playoff series with the Indiana Pacers who beat Milwaukee in four of their five regular season matchups. Milwaukee won game one of the series 109 to 94. Best of seven series, of course. And it happened on the back of Damian Lillard. And how it happened is important for why I am worried about Milwaukee moving forward. How it happened was largely in part two in otherworldly Damian Lillard first half. He had 35 points in total in the th first half. He had 19 points in the first quarter, was shooting absurdly well when the other players on the Milwaukee roster weren't shooting that great. Milwaukee was running a ton of great team offense, really excellently uh, setting some high screens for Damian Lillard to get great looks off of, and, and Damian Lillard buried them. It was after that first quarter that things looked really, really, really good for Milwaukee. They looked like they were going to have a real chance to pull away with Damian Lillard on the bench, and, and that's what kind of overshadowed Damian Lillard's 35 points was the run that actually put Indiana away and put the Pacers away quite early was an incredible 14 to three run to begin the second quarter after Damian Lillard went to the bench after playing the entire first quarter. Damian Lillard sat on the bench for nearly five minutes and then was able to come back in and, and tack on another 16 in the second quarter. It, it was, it was incredibly impressive, incredibly, incredibly impressive. And th there's two reasons why Lillard's 35 first half points were nearly overshadowed. One, 
was because of the the play by the rest of the team, the rest of the Milwaukee Bucks team to start that second quarter because that run put the game, I mean, basically out of reach for Indiana. It required Indiana to play some significant catch up the the entire rest of the way against Milwaukee and Indiana gave gave the Bucks a push and and we'll talk about that a little bit and, and Milwaukee has some stuff to clean up here that that is going to require so, some real work but th- there was a moment where it looks like the Milwaukee Bucks of old the Milwaukee Bucks of uh of 2021 where you had these role players. You had Bobby Portis. You had Pat Connaughton playing incredibly well. And that's what made that championship team tick was that that team, you know, for as top heavy as any NBA team is, that team was pretty deep. And it's something that this Milwaukee team has missed ever since that championship season where it had kind of every piece come together, put together an incredible playoff run and finish the job. What this team is missing, though, after that first half by Damian Lillard, it is another playmaker, is another scorer. Because Giannis Antetokounmpo is not playing right now. He suffered a left calf injury that held him out of the last three games of the regular season. Games Milwaukee played well in, for the most part, without him there. And, and of course, Milwaukee played pretty well against Indiana in game one. Giannis' timetable is uncertain. I don't think he's going to be playing tonight. Tonight uh, on Tuesday, April 23rd in, in game two, that game at 7.30 p.m. aired on NBA TV or on Bally Sports. But ultimately, this is where I am worried for Milwaukee. And, and the other thing that really overshadows Damian Lillard's 35 first half points is the fact that Damian Lillard had zero second half points. Zero, zilch, nada. And that's not something that happens. You don't typically see a guy go off for 35 and get goose-egged in the remaining 24 minutes. And credit to the Indiana Pacers. They, they keyed in on Lillard, defended him really hard. And look, Indiana still lost by 15. This this was not really a competitive game down the stretch, and Indiana made it a competitive game on, with a big run to close the third quarter. Um, although Milwaukee led by 17 at halftime, Indiana closed the third quarter with nine straight points to bring the lead down to, to 12. It, it was it was ugly, but the Bucks were able to pull away and, and thanks to some you know, great, great stuff by Chris Middleton in particular, Bo- Bobby Portis played, played very well. Bobby Portis has played great down the stretch with, you know, some injury issues for Giannis this season. And Chris Middleton had 15 second half points, really great stuff for him. But offensively, th- there is something missing from, from this Milwaukee Bucks team right now, because Giannis Antetokounmpo is not on the court and it is exactly what Milwaukee needs to, to win an NBA title. I know this is somewhat of a lazy comparison and I know that these two players are not the perfect parallels for Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard. However, I think it's worthwhile to think about the defending NBA champions in the Denver Nuggets. You have an excellent player who is up to basically the same caliber and, and plays a similar game, very different, but similar game uh, to Giannis Antetokounmpo in Nikola Jokic. You also have a great guard and outside threat in Jamal Murray. It's not just Jokic that really drives that team. It is the ability for those two to play off of each other. That's really dangerous for Denver. When you look at Milwaukee this year with Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo on the court, I mean, there there are times at which they are shattering efficiency numbers and expected efficiency numbers. 
for an NBA offense. It is very impressive what those two can do on the court together. And in the second half of this game, where, yes, Indiana didn't quite have the ability to make it a close game, and yes, there was something of Milwaukee being able to coast through the second half. And yes, Damian Lillard said after the game that they treated the second half kind of as practice for some of the other guys on the team to get warmed up, you know, for, for a game too. There's all these caveats. However, Milwaukee still didn't look the best that it could have in, in the second half. And part of that is because if you struggle to get your number one go-to scorer going in the second half because he had 35 points in the first. I mean, what what are what are you gonna do if you don't have another guy who who can go get you more buckets? And that's what having Giannis Antetokounmpo is so, so, so important for is so that if Damian Lillard is cooking you, you can crash on him. That's fine. But then who's Who's covering Giannis? Who's giving that extra help on Giannis? If you're giving the extra help to Damian Lillard, you're leaving somebody on an island with Giannis. Or you're leaving somebody on an, on an island with Chris Middleton. Or Chris Middleton is completely alone. Chris Middleton is a great player, but he's he's not a Dame. He, he's not a Giannis. And this is not a, a this is not a, a, a Chris Middleton hate podcast by any means. This is probably more of a Chris Middleton defense pod, defending podcast. Um, Milwaukee needs Giannis Antetokounmpo to win an NBA title. And I know it's not a hot take. I think they need him to win this series. And that's ultimately where, where that big, you know, big threat is that big missing piece that I was, I was alluding to at the beginning of the show, which is that I think it's hard for me to say I'm, you know, the game one victory made me pessimistic in, in opposition to last year's uh, game one reaction episode where I said the game one uh, loss made me optimistic. I'm, I'm hard pressed to say that game one victory made me pessimistic, but I think that game one victory showed me, I, I mean, confirming my priors just to how valuable Giannis is even in a first round playoff matchup. We saw it last year. We saw it last year against the Miami Miami Heat. And in this game, too, where Pascal Siakam had 36 points, led all scorers for Indiana, the only reason we're not talking about Pascal Siakam is because Damian Lillard went off so ruthlessly in the first half. And the game itself was never really in question. But there's another script to this game where Siakam goes off for the same 36 or goes off for a little bit more, goes off for 45. And we start saying, oh, wow. Imagine what having Giannis in this game would do. Because that ability for Giannis to take up that, that gravity in the front court, that energy for Siakam uh, on defense a little bit more, for, I mean, Giannis to contest Siakam a little bit more on defense, throw, throw him something a little bit different than, than you saw in that game. I think that's big. It's big for the offensive and defensive ends. And if if Milwaukee's going to get by Indiana, I, I think it's going to require Giannis getting back into the series and hopefully by game three. You, you hope it doesn't go more than that. And, you know, maybe, maybe it doesn't matter if it's not by game three if Milwaukee takes a 2-0 lead tonight. If Milwaukee takes a 2-0 lead, Indiana cuts it to 2-1, but... Giannis is able to come back for game four. Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter as much. I, I don't know, but doing this analysis based, basing this analysis on whether or not Milwaukee wins certain games feels like a dangerous game to me. Feels like you need, you need to get him back as, as quickly as you can individual game results and be damned because the front office showed you at the trade deadline. They, they showed you by firing Adrian Griffin. They showed you by firing coach Mike Budenholzer before that. The, the small key bucks front office is, is all in right now. And they need Giannis back to capitalize on, on this championship contention window because it feels like it is closing very quickly if it is not already closed. 
Oh, that's that's my hot take for the day that uh the Milwaukee Bucks need Giannis Antetokounmpo. Cupo. Um <laughs> not hot take, of course, but I, I think it is I think it's worthwhile visiting the dominant game one victory and and pouring a little bit of cold water on it and saying, look, I, I think it showed us some things about why it is so important to have Giannis uh, on this team and how that game one victory showed us as Milwaukee Bucks fans that uh, that's going to do it for today's show a little bit shorter, but there's lots of Wisconsin Badgers transfer portal news uh, dropping right now. Some women's hockey stuff that I'm going to plan to have an article up on, on Badger notes later today on Tuesday. Uh, but I do have some unfortunate uh, ba Badgers basketball transfer portal news written up on the site right now for Badger notes. You can find that link in my podcast description right here. Uh, we have other writers writing on all, all kinds of like we had like a three strikes situation uh yesterday in in wisconsin badgers transfer portal news pretty unfortunate uh you can find all that linked in the podcast description and today on tuesday i think there's going to be a pretty big uh pretty big news drop that is going to be tough is going to be tough I, I don't i don't know for certain that it's coming today but i'm pretty sure it's coming today uh but of course whenever it happens you you can find out about it by, by following me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrist. Thank you for enjoying your morning with a six-pack, the Scotty Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Brewers, Badgers, Packers, Bucks, and beyond six days a week while you're here on YouTube. You can watch this on YouTube, linked in the podcast description, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six-Pack. Hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. It really, really does help the show. Helps other people find the show, helps us do great things, bring on great guests. If you've not listened to yesterday's show, uh, it seems like it's really resonating with some folks. I uh, would highly, highly recommend going back to listen to that episode that we did with Ryan Eilers, uh, also of Badger Notes, where we talked about the state of college athletics and and just try to have a, a level-headed conversation about it, even though Ryan is a guy that uh, he, he and I disagree about a number of things on occasion, but he and I have really thought, we, we, we both value uh, the discussions that we have with one another. So I, I would really, really greatly recommend going back and listen to that. And if, if you don't, stay, stay tuned to the feed where we're going to have another episode in your feed tomorrow morning. Until then, Bucks and Six.